गुड मॉर्निंग एवरी वन टूडे वी शेल स्टडी अबाउट द लॉस ऑफ वाटर फ्रॉम प्लांट्स इन इट्स फर्स्ट पार्ट वी शेल डिस्कस द साइट्स ऑफ वाटर लॉस इन प्लांट्स वाटर लॉस कैन टेक प्लेस इधर इन द लिक्विड फॉर्म और इन द वेपर फॉर्म इन लिक्विड फॉर्म इट इज लॉस्ड इन एज ड्रॉपलेट्स एंड द प्रोसेस इज नोन एज गटेशन वाइल वेन द loss of water takes place in the form of vapor the process is known as transpiration gutation as i told you it is the loss of water in the liquid form or as droplets the term was coined by a bajestin in 1887 it is a phenomena that take place in small herbaceous plants mostly when the rate of transpiration is very low and there is rapid absorption of water from the soil plants exude the excess water in the form of droplets and this phenomena is called gutation gutation takes place through specialized pores that are known as hydrothodes or water pores or water stoma here you can see a section of the leaf through hydrothodes the leaf contains epidermis mesophyll and the vascular tissue but the tip part also contains a group of parenchymatous cells that is known as epithelium water from the vascular tissue enters the epithelium and from this epithelium it goes in the hydrothodal space and is exuded from the leaf tip in the form of droplets a guard cell can be present at the tip of the hydrothode or it may not be present as the water is exuded from the hydrothodes several salts or ions of nitrogen phosphorus potassium sodium and magnesium they also come out with the water from the leaves and these salts are deposited on the surface of the leaf with time the concentration of these salts increases on the surface and it may cause leaf burn due to the high concentration or due to the specific toxicity of these ions so gutation is a phenomena which is used just to exude the excess water but many times this phenomena is harmful for the plants though the loss of water from gutation is very less but some plants like colocasia nymphifolia can exudate even 100 ml of water in a single night next we shall study about transpiration transpiration can take place through three parts of the plant these are lenticels cuticle and stomata the transpiration that takes place from lenticels is called lenticular transpiration from cuticle it is known as cuticular transpiration and from stomata it is known as stomatal transpiration lenticular transpiration what are lenticels these are small pores on the surface of corky stems and branches of woody plants sometimes some of the fruits and roots when primary growth takes place in the plant most of the plants are green even their stems and branches are green and they perform photosynthesis but as the secondary growth takes place woody tissue develop and the stem and the branches they become woody and corky and uh, the outer chloranchymatous tissue and epidermis ruptures or it is destroyed and in the place of stomata small openings appear these openings are biconvex in shape and therefore these openings are known as lenticels the lenticels are openings that cannot be closed they don't have any guard cells type structure 
their shape and size is fixed and uh, water loss can take place from such openings the loss of water from the lenticels is less than 1% of the uh, total loss that takes place from the plant a phallum then phallogen and phalloderm these are the three layers that develop after the uh, secondary growth and the epidermis and the primary cortex that all rupture and here you can see a pore that doesn't have any guard cell and here the only loose cells are present from these cells the water evaporates and uh, in this loss that takes place from these biconvex structures this loss is known as lenticular transpiration next type of uh, transpiration is cuticular transpiration this transpiration takes place from cuticle cuticle is a layer made up of cutin it is found outside the epidermis on all the aerial parts of the plant it is a protective layer where transpiration takes place from this cuticle at a very low rate the thickness of the cuticle varies with the species and environments plants that grow in dark or in shade the cuticle in such plants is very thin but those plants that grow in direct sunlight the cuticle that develops is thick so plants that uh, are grown in shade they have thin cuticle and when they are transferred to direct sunlight transpiration takes place from their outer surface or cuticular surface at a very high rate and this causes water deficient condition in the plants and water deficit injuries occur next type of transpiration that is stomatal transpiration it takes place through stomata 80 to 90 percent of the total transpiration in the plants takes place through stomata stomata are small pores that can be opened or closed according to the condition and these are present on the epidermal layer of the plants the stomata are present on all the parts of the plant except the roots though they are very small in size only a few micron but they are present in large number and when they are completely open they occupy almost 1 to 3 percent of the total area of the leaf here you can see a diagram of a stomata a stomata is made up of guard cells two guard cells are present and these guard cells they surround the stomatal opening guard cells are mostly banana like in shape or we can say that they are kidney shaped or bean shaped guard cells are present on the epidermis of the leaf these are the cells that contain chlorophyll and perform the process of photosynthesis though all other cells of the epidermis they don't have chlorophyll they don't contain chlorophyll and they cannot carry on photosynthesis the inner region of these guard cells is thick walled and the outer layer is thin walled so what happens when water enters these guard cells the outer layer it bulges out and it pulls the inner uh, layer outside and therefore when the two bean shaped cells your guard cells are pulled outside from, they separate from the central region and the stomata opens as the stomata opens the water vapor from inside the leaves comes out stomata are the part of epidermis and below the epidermis is found the found a network of mesophyll tissue this mesophyll tissue it uh, is a main region of the plant that performs the photosynthesis and uh, here large gaps are present large intercellular spaces are present every stomata opens in such intercellular space and these spaces that are found below the 
stomata they are known as substomatal cavity these cavities are saturated with water because the water from the sclerenchymatous cells or mesophyll cells they it enters these intercellular spaces in the vapor form so when the guard cells they open the water vapor from the substomatal cavities it comes out in the environment and inner region when the stomata were closed the these substomatal cavities they were saturated with water and as they open steep vapor pressure gradient occurs and the loss of water from these stomatal openings takes place at a very high speed these stomata are present in all the sporophytic plants except the liverworts their size number and distribution it varies with species to species and according to the environmental condition in summer's plants stomatas stomata are completely absent while in most of the monocots stomata are present on upper and lower both the surface of the leaves and on both the surface they are almost equally distributed though in dicots stomata are present on both upper and lower surface of the leaf but their number is more on the lower surface as compared to the upper surface the leaves that contain stomata on both the surfaces are known as amphistomatous leaf in woody trees stomata are present only on the lower surface on the upper surface they are absent and such leaves where stomata are present only on the lower surface are known as hypostomatous leaves while in the floating plants the lower surface of the leaves are in contact with the water and stomata are present only on the upper surface and such leaves are called as hyperstomatous or epistomatous the stomata are of various type depending on the number and size or position of the subsidiary cell if the subsidiary cells are exactly similar to the other epidermal cells we can't differentiate the subsidiary cells from the epidermal cells then the stomata is known as anamocytic type of stomata or ranunculaceous type of stomata but if the stomata is surrounded by three subsidiary cells two are similar and the third one is smaller than the other two that is the subsidiary cells are dissimilar then this type of stomata is known as anisocytic type of stomata or cruciferous type of stomata in parasitic and diacetic type of stomata there are two subsidiary cells but in parasitic type of stomata these cells are arranged parallel to the guard cells while in diacetic type of stomata the subsidiary cells are arranged at a right angle to the guard cells parasitic type of stomata are also known as rubiaceous type of stomata and diacetic type of stomata are also known as caryophyllaceous type of stomata in when the guard cells are surrounded by five or more subsidiary cells and these cells are radially elongated then this stomata appears appears like a star star shaped stomata are also known as actinocytic type of stomata when the guard cells are surrounded by two or more layers of subsidiary cells these subsidiary cells they form circular regions around the guard cells such stomata are known as cyclocytic type of stomata so transpiration takes place from these stomata transpiration is a subject of debate according to one view transpiration is a necessary evil it produces water deficit conditions and causes dehydration injuries plants cannot avoid this loss of water stomata open 
just for gaseous exchange, exchange of carbon dioxide and oxygen. But meanwhile, the loss of vapor takes place from the openings, and plants can't avoid this loss of water. If there was no transpiration, then even a single rainfall or only a single incidence of irrigation would be enough to grow plants. Thus, this is just an unnecessary loss of water. According to another view, transpiration is essential for plants. It helps to maintain the strength of the plants. Because of transpiration, cells are never fully turgid and it removes the extra pressure from the cell wall. It is also uh, essential for the promotion of uptake and translocation of solutes as we discussed in the earlier lectures. Water absorption takes place because of transpiration and the solutes also move inside the roots with the water that is absorbed and therefore the uptake and translocation of solutes takes place just because of transpiration. Transpiration also helps to maintain the temperature of the plants. Evaporation through the leaves reduces the leaf temperature and thus transpiration is essential for the plants to maintain stronger cells for promotion and uptake of solutes and to maintain their leaf temperature. Thank you.